Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Axel Grave and I am back with more reactions with an X, Tokyo Revengers. I am super excited to get into this episode, episode 21, and the reason being is it's been so well done in a lot of ways, right? We talked about the whole series and like the fact that it addresses uh, a good amount of gang culture without stereotyping and, and like blocking into categories like movies typically do and, and a lot of TV shows, as well as the fact that it's doing a little bit more interesting concept with this time travel thing in some ways, right? In some ways, it's typical time travel, but it has certain restrictions and actions that I think make it a very well done and not easy to write, but possible to write time travel thing, right? Where like, yes, he can time travel, but not to whenever he wants to, right? He can time travel a set amount of time back. So there's a lot of really good things about the series. And if you're just checking us out now, you know, uh, try to go check the series out. Cause there's, you know, we're 20 episodes in now and it's a lot harder to explain all the backstory, especially cause where we're at now, we've been quite a few episodes from the core of the mission for the story in our protagonist Takamichi, which is saving his girl, right? Or really his ex, but, but you get the point. And so I really like that, that they can pull away from the main story and tell these really emotional stories between like Mikey and Baji and still tie it in with the main story without making it feel forced. So, as always, guys, if you haven't done so yet, support the original content creator. Check it out on Crunchyroll. You know, uh, check out the manga if you can. However you can support, if you enjoy this, you should support so that we can get more great stuff. And just to say thanks, right, for having such great media material released. It's not every day that we get great series. I mean, it, it kind of is nowadays with all the media being prevalent. But it's still nice to show the love. And, uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you are a patron with us, I want to give you a shout out because you make the dream work and I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff that I do without you guys. So thank you guys. And I hope you enjoy the uncut uh, version of this on Patreon. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into this episode 21. Yeah, just short of the goal. Unfortunate. Now I remember some of the things that had kind of gotten to me last episode. And it was not small. It didn't look small. Just let that guy kill him. Or kill him instead of Mikey. That Mikey can't kill him. I'm just saying, there's solutions. They're just not great. Well, and he's not a killer, so. Can't expect him to be somebody who's not. Unless he wants to get the damn job done! He could have done that anytime, though. He's just setting it up. Man, he's still probably ex fucked up. So he knew, at least. You gotta do something, man. Now you're just watching. Yeah, I wouldn't get in his way. He's about to punch you in like the throat and just totally, totally f you up. I should have known it was a kick. Now it's over. 
I think he's gonna piss himself. Yeah, is it though? Maybe, yeah. Kicked in the hair. I was gonna say, there's no, uh. I don't know if you thought you were gonna fight this or what was gonna happen. He punched him too. Yep, here it goes. This is also not that hard. Uh, you punch someone to death pretty quick. You will definitely fuck your hands up, though. Uh, unless someone stops him. Go, Takamichi! You're gonna catch some, but you better do something or else it's just gonna go the way you said. You still can! Ah, I hate his crying ass sometimes, bro. Go do something about it then. Stop just standing there. No, it was just a switchblade. I thought it was bigger. Because it had that weird angle, but I guess that's just the edge of his switch. Or, sorry, that's a butterfly knife, not a switchblade. My apologies. Switch is just... That was a, uh, spinner. Flashback time! Every anime in the world, it has to have a flashback. I mean, he'd be missing so many teeth by now already. Like, his nose would have already been crushed one way or the other or into his face honestly after like 20 punches your cheekbones would have been cracked or broken in uh like full force punches to the head to the ground man yeah that's not a there's no give there right the, the ground's not giving under your head oh shit he's oh damn son I actually know somebody who got stabbed in the back. He had a rough time after that. Second wind. Wish he'd have gotten that to stab Kasaki in the throat. Oh well. Did he save him because he was holding him a different way? He ain't gonna be alive if you keep walking with that wound, that's for sure. Well, maybe, I don't know. People have survived crazier shit, honestly. Oh, he's gonna kill himself? Wow. That is crazy. Also, super painful way to go. I don't know why you would do that one. This is wild. Also, way different, right? So now what's gonna happen? Damn. Definitely wasn't expecting this. See, I told you it could still change, though. There were a bunch of ways that things could have, right, switched up. Also, but that doesn't mean it necessarily changed it just because that happened, also. Wow. That's really nice of him, but, man... I know where he is in the future. He'd be a good, useful guy because he's already got a record and can kind of like do other stuff. Nice. I'm going to pause it there. That was some nice, ragged breathing. Did you hear him when he was breathing? We're going to go rewind it. That was cool. it from his chest. Damn. That was, that was some good voice acting. That's sad.
I just saw it. I was gonna say, that doesn't necessarily mean he won't beat him to death still. <laughs> man rest in peace man yep you still got a job to do motherfucker get on it I'm gonna wait till the end of the episode to talk about it but this is really well done in a lot of ways punch I knew that was coming, but you gotta stand up and take it. Pain. Kick to the face! There we go. One person who moves into action inspires others to move into action. Ooh, that fucking sec. You hear that shit? One sec. Listen to that. Damn, son. Sometimes it's all it takes. I still can't believe he's standing, but he is crazy, so. Can't knock down a crackhead or a crazy person, man. I love how they make his angry face, though. There we go. That's the end of the episode. We still don't get to see what, what he decides. Good writing. This episode was really good in a lot of ways, man. It's really nice to see that farewell because in real life, we don't get that, right? Like, I know a lot of people who did not get that with their brothers and friends and, like, other people who were shot down in the streets or stabbed or... Right, and, he, and all of the different things that can happen. And so it's such a beautiful thing to get that goodbye, right? Because most of the time I'd say in these kinds of right situations, life, whether it's them dying, going to prison for their whole lives, right? There's a lot of things that happen that separate people and do things like this. And it's just such a powerful moment in that one to get to see it. But once again, it's, it's such a rare thing because you know, these things, these acts of violence are not convenient. They're not, right? Um, you don't just happen to get sh not get shot while your friend does and get to hold him while he dies every single time. And obviously that could also be worse and more traumatic, but they have a chance to say goodbye, and a lot of people didn't get a chance like that. And so it's just very interesting for me to see these, right, and get to see them really displaying it in a lot of depth and detail as well as once again just the overall emotion of it right and showing that that right we're not that not it's this isn't doesn't come from a place all the time of heartless killing why do people 
kill, right? Uh, in revenge and, and, and this, and a lot of the times, right, the, especially in feuds and gang wars and things like that. And once again, even outside of gang wars, if you go to like, I always forget the one in the, the one very infamous blood war in the Appalachians, I think it is, where it's like the, these two families that for generations just kept killing each other and killing each other and vengeance and vengeance, right? You killed my uncle. Well, you killed my cousin. Well, you killed... And it just, the cycle goes on and on. And it really is a vicious cycle of killing and death that happens in these kinds of situations where all it takes is... And, and a lot of times it doesn't even start out, right? Like, because a lot of times accidents happen in fights. People people fall the wrong way, get hit too many times, of get stabbed unintentionally, right, by something in the environment. There's all kinds of things. I, like I said, I knew a guy who got in a fight and punched the dude um, and killed him because when he hit the ground, he hit his the ground and I, like, he either snapped his neck or caused brain damage. And that, that was it. That was, that was uh, murder, you know what I mean? Uh, or manslaughter, I can't remember what he what he was charged with for that. Um, but yeah, and once again, I even like I had seen one of my cousins the other day, he's having a rough time, and I kind of want to bring some of these people to the channel to give more perspective, right? So that you're not just hearing it from this weird white guy on the on the screen. It's like, oh yeah, this that. And I'd like to bring some people with more direct experience so they can give testimonies about their lives and experiences in these kinds of situations and so i really think that would be something i would i wonder if you guys would be interested would you be interested in seeing you know real gang members or criminals reacting to things like this right like if i brought you guys car thieves would you want to see them talk about stealing cars or doing this etc and obviously i'd bring former i'm not trying to incriminate or snitch on anybody anything like that but I, I think it's important to get perspectives and ideas of these worlds from people who were actually in them and not necessarily from what we get which is a lot of media or we get the information about these people from the people who are sent out to enforce against them right like law and the government and stuff and so we often get a very skewed picture that's not painted with all the colors to show the details and the depths of the situations. And I think this show does that very well. It shows how deep these kinds of things are and that they're not so simple. With that said, I'm probably running out of time on the camera. So I want to give a big shout out to everyone who watched. Remember to support the original content on Crunchyroll or wherever the manga is published. Check it out. It, it is a very good series. I, I really want to read the manga, but I'm afraid if I start reading, I will pass where we are in the anime and I'll never stop. <laughs> I, I do that every time. So I, I don't do Jujutsu Kaisen or Tokyo Revengers for that. I don't read them yet. Uh, and if you enjoyed like, you know, watching with us, like, comment, tell us what you thought, ask questions, come and discuss with us. And if you want to see more, subscribe or hit the bell to get notifications on all our new stuff coming out. And uh, finally, big shout out to the patrons for watching. I really do appreciate you guys. Uh, we try to list you in the comments every month. And absolutely, you guys get this one uncut, full audio, full video over on Patreon. You can get the links to that with the uh, passwords and everything. And I just want to say thank you guys. So appreciate you. Uh, and anybody else who wants to see that stuff for as low as a dollar a month, you too can get access. So now I'll stop branding and say thank you for watching. I'm Axel Grave, and I'll see you next time on Reactions with the next Tokyo Revengers.